Hey there, welcome to the YouTube channel. I pray that this message encourages you and it helps you grow and become more like Jesus. And make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can continue to grow and learn more. Enjoy. Good morning, church. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we haven't done a service like this in a while, um, thankfully. And there is some good news on the horizon. We have seen the um, variant and the spread of, of the virus decrease. And we hit that, that, that spike, and now it's on decline. So thankfully, we'll be able to come together more as time moves forward. And so we look forward to seeing you again next Sunday. And I've been looking forward to preaching this message. Uh, we were talking about Joshua. And the key to his success is that God was with him. And that was my first message of January uh, 2022. And the second one was the difference and the key difference and the key to spiritual growth was that he was obedient to the word of God. And so I wanna talk about that today. And so let me pray and we'll get right into it. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you, God, that you have given us the greatest means of spiritual growth. We thank you that you care about us growing and maturing and being more like Christ. I pray, Lord, that you would speak to us through your word. Thank you, God, for leading and guiding us by your word. And Lord, prepare our hearts. May we be humble to receive and diligent to apply what we learned today. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to talk to you about the key to spiritual growth. The key to spiritual growth. I'm excited on this, on this topic. I'm excited to teach this topic because I love helping people grow spiritually. And I've learned and discovered something from scripture as well as from experience that the greatest means of spiritual growth has always been and always will be the Bible. And however, the difference maker in whether we grow or not grow isn't how much we consume, but how much we obey. So the difference of someone who grows spiritually and someone who doesn't grow spiritually, it's not how much they read the Bible, it's how much they apply the Bible to their lives. Jerry Bridges says this in his book, Grow in Your Faith, and I'll use a few of his quotes from this book. He's an author and a pastor on spiritual transformation and, and growth. And he says this, all of life should be a theater in which we learn to apply the word of God. Almost every event, every activity, every circumstance may be or should be an occasion of applying a scriptural principle or even a specific verse to the situation. And scripture talks about this a lot, the importance of, of obeying the word of God. And the one that I really value a lot is to start with, and there's many of them, and so we'll only look at a few today. But the first one is Philippians 2, 12 through 13. You can turn to your Bibles or you can use the scripture on your screen. This is what it says, Dear friends, you always followed my instructions when I was with you. And now that I am away, it is even more important. Work hard to show the results of your salvation. Obeying God with deep reverence and fear. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Paul was their teacher and their example for a Christian life, and he was gone. And so he was saying, it's so important that you can follow my instructions since my accountability isn't there. And for accountability's sake, I'm not around. So follow my instructions. Notice that Paul brings up the words, work hard to show results, obeying God, and also even to do what pleases him. Paul makes sure they understand that there has to be an effort on their part now that they have been saved. They were told to work out, and it's, you could I mean, even think of it as working out in the gym, exercising your salvation, showing results, putting it into practice in their daily, daily living. They were told, this is key, they were told not to work for their salvation. They, didn't, they weren't working to get saved, but to work out the salvation 
that God had already given them. So again, to show results, to intentionally work out and live a saved life. And he says these words with deep reverence and fear. What does that mean? It means to be dependent on God. It means to be humble and a care to honor and appreciate all God has done. So we, we, we appreciate salvation. And what we do is we live saved. We live the life that he wants us to live with respect, with humility, with reverence for what it cost Jesus Christ to save us. And it was important that Paul's church that he helped plant and start and work, that they would work out and live what God had started in them. What's amazing though is verse 13. We learn here that we're not alone in this effort. It says, for God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. So both divine enablement and human responsibility are involved in getting God's work done. Believers are partners with God and laborers together with him. And the verbs work or works means energizes or provides enablement. So God makes a way. God gives us the desires and the power and the ability to work it out. But we need to understand something. We need to understand that, that we have been empowered by God to do what is right. And doing what God wants isn't done on our own power, but it is worked out through your effort and obedience. The word of God planted in your heart and the grace of God's spirit who dwells in you enables you to follow, obey, or live out the righteousness of Christ. God gives us the desire, but he also gives us the freedom to exercise our effort and obedience. Now, here's the thing about that. This also means that we have the potential to be disobedient, to sin and not grow or mature. What we're seeing here is, is that they were meant to not just be saved. They were meant to grow. They were meant to progress forward, but it wasn't gonna be done by accident. It was gonna take working it out. It was gonna take effort to do everything that they're supposed to do. Now the question might be is, again, where do you find out what you're supposed to do? So you can do it. Well, that's the Bible. So the most important discipline for sure in spiritual growth is knowing the scriptures and reading the scriptures. But the secret or the key to spiritual growth isn't how much we read, it's how we apply it and work it out in our lives. There's more scripture for this. How about James? Let's go to James chapter 1, 19 through 21. It says, understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. It goes on to say, human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives and humbly accept the word God, the word God has planted in your hearts for it has the power to save your souls. Wow, it's awesome. We see in the scripture that God desires righteousness. Uh, he uses the example of being quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. Uh, he talks about um, human anger does not produce the righteousness or the righteous um, desires of God. So he wants us to have right living. And one of the ways we do that, according to verse 21, is we get rid of all the filth and evil in our lives. So we stop filling our minds and our actions with wrongdoings. Instead of uh, working out wrongdoings, what we do is we go along with what God has planted in our hearts and what we put in our hearts too with the word of God. So we replace it with the word and righteousness of God. Go back to uh, Philippians 2, 13, that he gave us the desires to do what pleases him. Christ's righteousness lives in you so that you can actually do what you're supposed to do. But our effort on our part is we have to match our actions with what is going on in here and what he's done in us. So the spirit of God wants to do right, so we do right. And so here, James is saying the same thing, 
that we get rid of these things and we instead live according to the word. And he goes on to say in the second portion of this, of verse 21, he says, humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts for it has the power to save your souls. Humbly accept the word planted in you. This implies that they have Christ in them because of salvation, but it also implies the word, truth, and scripture that's planted or sown into our hearts. In Psalm 119.11, it came, came to my mind. It says, I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. I heard someone once say, get into the word <laughs> until the word gets into you. I love that. And Jerry Bridges says, we know the only way we can avoid conformity to the values of this world is consistent exposure to the word of God so that its teachings can continually influence and change our values and convictions. But here's the thing, we can, we can get into the word and we can read it, but James says we have to humbly accept it. We have to let it change us. We have to agree with it, agree that it's right. And once we do that, once we accept it as truth, we let it fill us to the brim so much that it even affects the way we live. So we get into the word until it gets into us. We accept it. We humbly accept it as truth and right. Well, guess what that's doing? Now that's gonna cause, it's gonna, it's gonna create conviction, a conviction or a way of life. And you're gonna believe it. You're gonna accept it. So you're gonna read it, believe it, accept it. And now it's gonna change the way you live. But James drives home the importance and the difference maker here of, of spiritual growth in the next few verses. And he talks about, we can't just be hearers or listeners, we must be doers of the word. So this is what he says next, but don't, don't just listen to God's word, you must do what it says. Otherwise you're only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey it, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, walk away and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. Wow, this is a, a really powerful scripture. There's so much I could say about it, but uh, it, it's basic. And right away in the first verse, it's not enough to listen and learn about God's word. We must do what it says. And, and if we don't, he says, we're only fooling ourselves. And what does he mean there? Uh, this is implying that we're not the good listeners we think we are if we don't do what it says. Um, the achievement isn't being able to sit through a lecture or my entire sermon or a teaching and say, yes, I have grown. Well, that's the first discipline. The most important discipline is to now sit through it and then go and do what it says. He says this too in verse 25, or in verse 23 through 24, he uses this mirror analogy that if you look in the mirror and, and you forget what you look like is the same way as if you look at scripture but don't let it change the way you live. It's an interesting analogy, it's a little struggle. It, it can be hard to understand, but this is, how I, this is how I paraphrase that. This is what the mirror is to me. The word of God sticks to us. It gets into us when we do what it says. The more we do what the word says, the more it leaves a lasting impression that we can't forget. Why? Because it changes who we are and how we live. It changes who we are and how we live. So we look into the word and we don't forget it because we're intent on applying it. And when we do it, it changes the way we live. Uh, some would say that this is a great place and a great, um, verse to remind people to memorize scripture. I agree 100% so we don't forget it. But we still have to apply it to our lives. Verse 25 is key too. He says, if you look carefully, in the NIV it says intently. And what this means in the Greek is to stoop down to get a closer look. Uh, to look carefully, to, to not be distracted but to really look. I don't know if you've ever been reading the Bible and you've read three paragraphs or a whole chapter and then you realize you have no idea what you read. Um, that happens, you know, it happens to all of us and to the best of us. 
We got things in our mind, we're distracted, we're thinking about all the things we have to do, maybe we're tired. That would be an example of not looking into the scriptures carefully or intently to learn something that we can now fashion and, and live in our lives or fashion to our lives. So that's looking carefully into it. And then this is what he ends with. And if you do what it says, then God will bless you for doing it. God will bless you for doing it. It doesn't say God will bless you for knowing it. It says God will bless you for doing it. And look at when the blessings come. They come after obedience. I've heard the world say this online, talking to people, um, even some Christians. They'll say the Bible, it didn't work for me. And I would have to ask them, did you work the Bible into your living? Because the Bible has worked for me. It has worked for you when we put it into our living, when we work it into our everyday life. Pragmatically and practically, the Bible really does work and it comes to life. And that's where the power of the Bible is. It's not just in the words and the spirit using it to change our lives, but it's us putting the effort into it and working it out into our living. And that's really what James is trying to drive home. There's another scripture verse that I love on this topic. It's the last one primarily for uh, our key verses, and that is Psalm 119.34. It says, give me understanding and I will obey your instructions. I will put them into practice with all my heart. We need knowledge. We need understanding. So um, knowledge precedes you know, action and obedience. So it comes before it. We do need to have a hunger for knowledge first, read the Bible, and then have a hunger to live it out. There's no doubt about that. Disciples are called students or learners. So we're supposed to be a student of Christ. Uh, all those things matter. <clears throat> but to follow Jesus means to follow his ways, even in the way we live as well. And so we can't, we can't obey what we don't know but James and the scripture and Jesus himself would teach that we also must um, obey what we do know and what we do live out or we need to live out. And what I love about this last portion of the scripture is he doesn't want just the understanding. Um, he, he needs it to obey the instructions. And he says, I will put them into practice with all of my heart. You know what that sounds like? That sounds like someone who is wanting to understand so he can actually, or he, he or she will live it out. So in other words, we have to have the intention that we're actually going to live out what we're reading. So the question I have for all of us is, do we have intentional hearts? The Holy Spirit gave me this, uh, and man, it's a, heavy, it's a heavy scripture. I read it in my personal devotional devotions uh, last week. And it says in Ezekiel 33, 31 through 32, it's, it's convicting. It says, so my people come pretending to be sincere and sit before you. This is God talking about the Jewish people, his people. He says, my people come pretending to be sincere and sit before you. They listen to your words, but they have no intention of doing what you say. Their mouths are full of lustful words and their hearts seek only after money. You are very entertaining to them like someone who sings love songs with a beautiful voice or plays fine music on an instrument. They hear what you say, but they don't act on it. God was entertainment. God was just a moment, but they had no plan on living or acting out all the beautiful things that God was giving them. That is convicting. Jerry Bridges also says something challenging. He says, one of the banes of present day Christianity is the way we sit every week under the teaching of God's word or have private devotions and perhaps participate in a Bible study group without a serious intent to obey the truth that we learn. Mm, that, that hit me when I read it. <laughs> I've read that many times. I've read the book many times. And uh, it really convicts me that every day I read the Bible, every Sunday I go to a church. For me, I'm the pastor, but when I don't preach and when I'm growing up, 
do I go to the Word? Do I go to sermons? Do I go to Bible studies? And do I approach the Holy Scriptures with reverence and respect? And do I approach these moments of learning with the intention to listen well, but also to live it out well? That is so important. And this is such an important discipline and the key factor, the difference maker of someone who grows or someone who doesn't. And James finishes his scripture with three examples of a life that obeys the word. True religion or faith with works, what he says later on in the scripture. He says this, if you claim to be religious but don't control your tongue, you are fooling yourself and religion is worthless. Pure and genuine religion in the sight of God the Father means caring for orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. So how does, how does James qualify or give you indicators of, of whether you're obeying the word and not just hearing it? He says it should change the way you talk. It should change our speech about others, uh, about ourselves, about people. What, it should change our self-control with our mouths, just as an example he uses. The second thing is it should change how we care for people, that we should have mercy and pity for those who are hurting like widows and orphans and taking care of them. And lastly, he says, not letting the world get into us or corrupt us as we live in this world, because we, we have to live in this world. Uh, but don't let the world get into us. And Jerry Bridges says something about this. He says, one of the things we can be sure of, if we do not actively seek to come under the influence of God's word, we will come under the influence of sinful society around us. The impact of our culture with its heavy emphasis on materialism, living for oneself and instant gratification is simply too strong and pervasive for us to not be influenced by it. He actually believes, and I agree with him, that we're going to be influenced by this world because it's all around us, but we combat it by being under the influence of the Word of God, the Holy Spirit, the presence of God. And we fight it by choosing to obey what the Word of God says versus what this world wants us to do. So how are we doing on those things? How are we doing with our speech? How are we doing with caring for others in need? How are we doing with staying pure in a corrupt world? It's important that we check ourselves on that. But I gotta encourage you with something too. Uh, the Spirit of God is working and helping you obey more than you realize. Let me give you some examples of what I mean. I bet you've been kind today. I bet you've been kind yesterday. I bet you've been showing love. I'm, I'm sure of it that there were moments where you could have you know, reacted and snapped on someone and you decided to show patience and love. I think you're doing more than what you realize. I think the Holy Spirit is actually um, working in you more than you realize. What would be key is, is that we're aware and sensitive as the day goes on. As he said before, Jerry Bridges said before, that we use all of life like a theater. We use all of life as moments to apply what we read in scripture. So let me close again with a recap. The key to spiritual growth Discipline ourselves to read and apply scripture in our everyday lives. I wanna encourage you to have a hunger to read the Bible, to get in your word every day. But be sure of this, that we must apply something from it. We must be eager and intent to go into reading the word with the intention of living it out. That is the key. That is the difference of someone who grows and someone who doesn't, is it changes their life. So what's a step of obedience for you today? Let me give you an action, a couple action steps. Really simple, I've already said it numerous times. Get into the Word with the intention to practice what you read. Just one thing. And then be mindful to apply yourself to basic principles of Scripture while you're at work, at home, school, and around others even in your private life when no one's around. Be mindful to apply everything you're storing in your heart when you read the word. And, and you know what, even be, another step would be more mindful and aware of how he's already doing it in your life. It's pretty cool when you can kind of recognize, oh wow, I, I, I made the right choice there. I, I chose the righteous thing versus the wrong thing. And so that's the key. 
That's the key to spiritual growth, is knowing the word, but also living it out. I'm gonna pray, but I wanna give you guys a heads up of something we're getting ready to do at Calvary. We've been really wanting to help our church go through uh, our starting point. And it's been challenging to, uh, to get everyone together during this time. So what we're gonna do is, starting next Sunday, we're gonna do a starting point series. And we're gonna share what we're all about as a church, our vision, and what we do as the church together to be a, uh, a difference maker in this community and around the world. Because we have a saying, it goes like this, we do all we can so all may know God's love and follow Jesus. And we wanna help you uh, be a partner and join this church um, or just know where we're at and where we're headed. So this is a really important series. We would love for you to come in house if you could. Um, now that things are going in the right direction, thankfully, and we continue to pray for our healthcare workers and everyone who's been struggling, we continue to reach out. We all should practice that, we should, all should do that. Um, but we're excited for this. And at the end of this three week series, uh, message series, you would, you'll have the opportunity to say, you know what, I'm all in here at Calvary and I wanna join and become a partner of helping us fulfill the mission that God has for our church. So this is something we've never done before. Uh, we're excited to offer it. So if you've been interested in, in saying, you know, this is my home church and I wanna get more involved, plugged in, contribute, this is a, a great series for that. And for all of us who've been here for years, this is a great reminder and a lot of fresh stuff that maybe you haven't heard yet that, um, that you will receive as well through this series. So let me pray. Let me pray for you and uh, stay safe at home as well. God, we thank you for your word today. We're challenged to apply what we read. And God, I know every single one of us want to grow and you've given us the key ingredient, the key factor of growth. Your word grows us, especially when we apply it to our lives. So God, give us the, the, the uh, sensitivity and to, the, to have the mindset and to be mindful throughout the day to apply what we're learning. Lord, to, to store the word in our hearts and then to go live it out. God, I pray for all those who are still sick, those who are helping in our hospitals right now and working hard, God, our healthcare workers that are working hard to keep people healthy, Lord, to strengthen them, strengthen their heart, their mind, Lord, their physical well-being. And Lord, be with us, God, and protect us throughout this day. And we thank you for your faithfulness to us. And we love you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, church. Love you. Looking forward to seeing you next week to start this new series. God bless you. Have a great day.